Mexican and Mexico policy and the Title 42 policy and uh, enforcing the immigration laws passed by the United States Congress. Now, however, we have a president who is using lax enforcement of Title 42 of the Remain in, Mexico, Remain in Mexico policy as well as lax enforcement of the border laws. And as a result, we have a record high number of people who are coming across the border. About a month ago, uh, my team working along with the Texas Department of Public Safety and the Texas National Guard, uh, we began preparing uh, for something that we shouldn't have to prepare for. We began preparing for this uh, oncoming caravan or caravans that are headed our way. We shouldn't have to do it because, again, it's the Biden administration's job to be doing this. But because they're not doing it, uh, we've been working uh, for about a month now to be prepared for these caravans that are coming our way. Before coming out here, I had a briefing with the National Guard as well as uh, with the Texas Department of Public Safety. Uh, and here's the, the latest news they, they shared with me about the status of the caravans. They say that uh, some evidence makes it seem as though uh, uh, the caravans are disbanding to some extent. Uh, part of it is maybe because of a lack of resources, part of it may be because of weather, part of it may be because of other conditions. That said, uh, even if the caravans are breaking up, it doesn't mean that the people who were part of the caravans are not going to be trying to make it to the United States of America. It's just that they may be making here in ones or twos as opposed to large caravans. Uh, there are some other reasons why the, the caravans are breaking up, and, and that is it's a consequence of the agreements that I reached with the governors of Mexico where they are doing their part to help secure the border from the Mexico side of the border. This includes state police activity on the Mexico side upholding their end of the bargain uh, to slow migration. Uh, includes internal checkpoints on their side in Mexico helping to slow migrant movement toward the border as well as what we call mirrored activity. What that means is when uh, state law enforcement on the Texas side are undertaking, uh, undertaking uh, military and police movements uh, on the Mexico side, they are mirroring that operation. One thing that does is it slows or eliminates the cartel activity in that particular region. Whenever we slow or deter cartel activity, that will slow and deter cro uh, border crossings in that particular area. The National Guard and DPS are working also on an intensified strategy, and that is to block as many low water crossings as possible. One of the easiest ways for uh, illegal immigrants to cross into the United States is through these low water crossings. Uh, and so we're using multiple strategies to try to block those low water crossings. And we're also working on, or let's say the National Guard and DPS are working on uh, mass migration rehearsals. What that means is they are prepared to implement certain strategies, but also have the flexibility to move those strategies to the locations where the mass migration may occur. Uh, it, it may be that we uh, are fully prepared at this particular bridge to uh, block migration in this particular area. There are three particular regions of the state of Texas that we're most focused on right now. One is where we are right now. Uh, the main thing I wanted to share with you, I'm, I'm going to have uh, both uh, leaders from the National Guard and the Texas Department of Public Safety uh, share with you more details. Uh, blocking positions in the middle of the night. We can do it in the heat of the day. We can do it early in the morning. We conduct uh, boat operations uh, both here in Eagle Pass and in Del Rio as well, provide that deterrence and that early detection and warning along the river. We've got a task force of engineers in addition to our maneuver elements uh, that are responsible for establishing additional barriers where we have the land use agreements. We've got nearly uh, 40 miles of standard fencing that's been erected to date and another 18 miles of concertina wire to serve as that barrier and that deterrence. Thank you very much. And it's my understanding, uh, one thing that the National Guard achieves uh, are what are called turnbacks. Uh, and you all have documented uh, about 20,000 turnbacks. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. Sure. Uh, and now from the Texas Department of Public Safety, Lieutenant Colonel Freeman Martin. Thank you, Governor. Uh, 2021 was a record-breaking year in many ways, and none of them good. 
Uh, we, we saw 1.3 million apprehensions here in Texas, the highest ever. Uh, I believe the next highest was in 1986 with 723,000, so almost double in 2021. Uh, uh, fentanyl, we had a 1,268% increase in fentanyl seizures. These, these are state seizures, not federal government, in Texas in 2021. And if you compare January to May of 2021 to January of May of 2022, we have an additional 58% increase. So uh, obviously there's a lot of threats that we face here in the state of Texas. The unsecured border with Mexico is at the top of the list. Uh, what we're doing right here in Hidalgo County with, with and, and operation, when I say we, I mean Operation Lone Star. That's all of the state agencies that are involved in this operation. With Parks and Wildlife, TMD is very heavy, uh, uh, DPS and, and a lot of state agencies. Uh, tremendous amount of success in, in shutting down the, the highest traffic areas in the entire southern border is in Hidalgo County, the Rio Grande Valley, and it has always been. Securing the zones that they have secured in, in right here in this county, in Hidalgo County, and we see those numbers drop, and, and we deter caravans, we deter uh, working with our Mexican counterparts. Uh, but, but the one thing that has a, had a significant difference in this operation is these government these agreements that Governor Abbott signed with our his Mexican uh, counterparts. We have never had the cooperation and collaboration that we have today with our state counterparts across the border. They're working with their myriad our, our uh, operations along the border. They help us as we see a surge in one area. They, they, they the, as I said, these numbers are high. We would rather the numbers be zero. If we can deter, if we can prevent, that that's what success looks like. And working with our, our, our counter- Thank you. I want to go back and emphasize the point uh, that he just made, uh, and it's the seizure of fentanyl. So uh, Operation Lone Star and the Texas Department of Public Safety over the past year have seized almost enough fentanyl to kill every man, woman, and child in the entire United States of America. The reason why that must be underscored is that is fentanyl that got past Border Patrol. If it were not for Operation Lone Star, the Texas Department of Public Safety and Texas law enforcement, that would be fentanyl on the streets in the United States, killing Americans across our country. And it just goes to show uh, the way that the Biden administration and their approach to not securing the border uh, is exposing to Americans across the entire country to deadly fentanyl. With that, we'll be happy to take a few questions. Uh, the caravans had been dismantled, but they, the migrants are still moving forward. What you made is uh, the information that we're, we are getting is that to a large extent, uh, the large caravans are being disbanded. However, that does not mean uh, that the people who were part of those caravans uh, will not continue to try to make their way to the border. Our response is the same, and that is uh, we will be utilizing every tool and strategy that we can uh, to make sure that illegal, illegal immigration will not be able to take place. DHS is now thinking about moving migrants to Los Angeles, Albuquerque, Houston, and Dallas, something that you at one point were doing as well. But what DHS needs to do is their job. Their job is to enforce the laws passed by the United States Congress. That would mean to stop the illegal immigration from occurring in the first place. It would mean not tying the hands of ICE, not tying the hands of the Border Patrol officers, but rather unleashing them to do their job. Governor, uh, new CBP numbers show that uh, there have been 50 people on the terror watch list arrested here at the southern border just this fiscal year alone. That's more than the last five years combined. Your reaction to that? That's one of the most reprehensible things the Biden administration is doing. So you talked about 50 people on the terrorist watch list who have been apprehended. What you did not mention is all of those on the terrorist watch list who got away. If you're on the terror watch list, you will be spending more money to the cartels to try to evade being caught. So what that means is there's a high probability that there are a lot of people on the terror watch list who have been who have come into the United States. This is the president's job, national security. And our national security is at risk because of all these terrorists who are on the watch list who may have come across the border. The president of the United States is failing in his most fundamental duty, and that is to keep our nation safe. So first, uh, I will tell you this. I wish we weren't sending anybody anywhere 
And the only reason why we're having to put people on buses and send them to Washington, D.C. is because the Biden administration is not only not doing their job, but the Biden administration is apprehending people who cross the border illegally and then dumping them in cities that have no capability of handling them whatsoever. And it's those cities and small towns along the Rio Grande, Rio Grande and along the border that need our help to move those migrants elsewhere. And so we're doing our part to try to help our local communities. Uh, and uh, the, the, we are, we're hoping that meaningful parts of the funding will continue to come from donations. People can help out by uh, going to an online site, uh, borderbus.texas.gov, to contribute. But the bottom line is this. Uh, we will continue to alleviating the costs that the local governments would otherwise have to be responsible for had it not been for the Biden administration's open border policies. Still willing to hire some border patrol agents like in your... One hundred percent. And uh, listen, again, it's despicable. Uh, the, the, these border patrol agents who were on those horses, who were using reins to control those horses, have been completely exonerated by all law enforcement agencies. And yet, the Biden administration, uh, it still seems intent on punishing those border pro, uh, patrol officers. Uh, as governor, I'd be more than happy, I'd be honored uh, to have those border patrol officers be a part of the Texas team to secure the border. Two more questions. President Biden has never been to the border. Biden. We have demanded that Joe Biden come to the border and not for a, a, a candy-coated tour. He needs to see the struggles of what people in Del Rio are dealing with. He needs to see uh, the ranches that have been ripped apart uh, by the illegal immigration that he has allowed. He needs to talk to the people whose lives have been completely disrupted. He needs to talk to angel moms who have lost a child uh, because of an illegal immigrant in the United States of America. He needs to see firsthand the chaos that he has caused. Last question. Remember that Joe Biden campaigned on the promise of open border policies. The chaos that you are talking about that we're seeing on our border is the chaos that Joe Biden promised when he campaigned for president of the United States. And the American people are fed up with it. The people in the Rio Grande Valley, the people who live in border communities, many of whom may have supported Biden as president, uh, now want to reject him as president because they cannot stand what his open border policies are doing to their state and to their country. Great. Thank you, guys. Thank you all.